Hey everyone, Lewis, aka Spider-Man 921 here, and today I'm doing another movie review where I will be talking about the movie that beat Infin that's starting to beat Infinity War financially. And that is Deadpool 2. After the first now, when the first Deadpool movie came out, I was honestly blown away about how good it was. It was a very fantastic movie. And when I heard there was going to be a sequel, I was a bit skeptical because mainly Deadpool's comedy is really what makes it so great and unique from other superhero movies. And technically, comedy sequels don't usually do as well as the original. However, I'm willing, to, I'm willing to report that Deadpool 2 does not have that problem. It is just as good as the first one. And before I continue in this review, I just want to point out that there will be spoilers. So if you haven't seen Deadpool 2 yet, please stop watching this video, go see it, then come back. Um, everything that I loved about the first movie that returns in this movie is still pretty strong. Um, Ryan Reynolds is still amazing and funny as the Merc with the mouth. And one thing that I've loved about him playing Deadpool is just how much fun this guy has with this role. I mean, the best part about comic book movies now is when the actors have really, really embraced it and have a lot of fun. And I think Ryan Reynolds is the best example of it. Especially with this movie because he is also an executive producer and he did, and he also helped write it. So I think he, and he really had a lot, a lot of passion for Deadpool. And I think that's evident in this film as much as the first one. Also, speaking of the first one, um, there are, are some, there is a joke from the first Deadpool movie that we return to in the in this one, and um, it's basically after Vanessa dies in the opening uh, scene of Deadpool, where Deadpool returns to his, his apartment with Blind Al, and he opens up the floorboards and finds two kilos of cocaine labeled Wade, and right next to the cocaine is a box labeled The Cure for Blindness. <laughs> That was the moment in the theater where I I just burst out laughing at that because that was such a great throwback and when in Deadpool 1 when De Wade made that comment to Al when he was leaving to go take care of a save Vanessa from Ajax uh, he told Blind Al, Al, there's two kilos of cocaine in the apartment. They're hidden right next to the cure for blindness. And you kind of think, oh man, he's just screwing with her. But it was, but then coming in this movie when it was really, it's just so great and unexpected also the opening credits though uh they still all the uh you all the thing all the usual credits you expect are pretty much rewritten to be jokes and stuff and commentary sort of like the starring portion in the honest tra trailers by screen junkies but i really like the opening credits more for this movie because they pretty much did a parody of the modern bond films openings with you know there's always that huge dramatic song like a bunch of computer computer generated images and stuff and we did the exact same thing and in fact I'd say the opening credits for Deadpool 2 were almost a spot-on parody of Spectre the most recent Bond movie like it felt like the ex I was watching the exact same opening but with Deadpool uh, enough comparing with the first one I want to talk about some new stuff now um, let's start off with the biggest new character Cable played by Josh Brolin and yes there are a large Yes, there are Than references to Thanos uh, because Brolin is playing both the big bad Infinity War and the antagonist of Deadpool 2. <laughs> Cable was actually pretty great. Um, he's not funny all the time. He's kind of he's definitely a good opposite, a good foil to Wade, who makes jokes almost every chance he opens his mouth. Cable, he's much more serious, darker, and Brolin does an excellent job bringing that character to the big screen. Also, before seeing Deadpool 2, the last movie I saw was Infinity War, so it was kind of fun seeing Brolin playing an entire CGI character in one movie and then seeing him in a more active role in this movie where he did most of his stunts. One good thing that had me a little bit worried about Cable though was the time travel element, but fortunately it's not much of an issue because T Cable just explains that the time device he has doesn't take him to an exact can't take him to an exact point, but he mostly just slides through it. Can't exactly pinpoint, but get close enough. Also, they don't really allude to Cable's origin from the comics, which is that he's the son of X-Men, Cyclops, and genetically Jean Grey. Technically, uh, he's the son of a Jean Grey clone, but Jean Grey nonetheless. So they don't really allude to that at all, which I think is great. In fact, the only reference to Cable's comic book history is his daughter in the future, who he, whose name is Hope, which is a reference to Hope Summers, the first mutant that was born after M-Day, who Cyclops entrusted Cable with to take her into the future in order to keep her safe. And she became Cable's adopted daughter. But in this version, she's his biological daughter. Cable was awesome. Um, if they want to make a solo movie with Cable, I am okay with it. I would love to see Josh Brolin on his own, uh, <laughs> in his own movie as Cable. Although he is signed to, 
Though apparently Brolin is signed to a four picture deal. This is number one and I'm assuming the other two might be X-Force movies. Speaking of X-Force, let's talk about the other great character that was introduced, Domino, played by Zazie Beetz. Domino, and as much as I love seeing Brolin's cable, I really loved Zazie Beetz' Domino. She blew me away with this, with her role in this movie. She was just fun. She had a lot of good lines. Um, I would honestly say that Domino can really match match wits with Wade in the joke department. Also, I really love the way that they portrayed the luck aspect of her power of her powers, which is just basically probability manipulation, so nothing bad can really happen to her, and all the sequences where she does stuff it, so things work out for her is just amazing. Yeah, and the main thing, and uh, my favorite scene with Domino, though, was probably uh, towards the climax of the film when we find out that the kid Russell is teaming up with the Juggernaut, and right when Juggernaut breaks out of prison and Wade's like taunt, taunting him, like, bring it on, dude, and, and Domino, like, sees Juggernaut, she just, like, turns around and backs away and goes, and just mouths off, slowly mouths off, no, and just walks out of frame, frame, which was hilarious. And I just thought, okay, luck really is her superpower because any other hero would probably want to challenge the juggernaut, but she just saves her own, saves her own skin, which was great, which was great and really hilarious. But yeah, but yeah, and uh, also uh, Domino's luck powers really came in handy when X-Force jumped out, of the, when Wade's version of X-Force jumped out of the plane. Okay, so uh, one of the biggest surprises of this movie was was, well, how quickly they got rid of X-Force. <laughs> okay, so in the movie, uh, after Wade gets X-Force together, which consists of him, Domino, uh, Peter, Acid Spitting Guy, Shatterstar, Be Bevlin, and uh, Vanisher, he decides, okay, we're gonna go, we're gonna jump out of this plane, we're gonna go save Ross, let's do this! And they all jump out of the plane, but apparently Wade forgets to account for wind direction, and the only people that survive are him and Domino. Everyone else just, they all die. As they're landing, they're all like blown off course, and they all just basically fucking die. Die in the most hilarious sequences possible. I mean, oh man. Honestly, I'm, I'm kind of glad that they did that because there is no, because they announced that, because when they announced that they were going to do an X-Force movie, I thought, okay, so they're going to use Deadpool 2 to launch this X-Force. I mean, it, it didn't seem like they could do that successfully within another movie, character solo movie, but, oh man, they quickly wiped X-Force under the rug, and now, uh, basically, I assume that for the actual X-Force movie, it's probably going to be Cable, uh, Deadpool, Domino, and possibly Colossus. I'm just throwing Colossus out there because he's probably the only X-Men character that I know that is associated with the De Deadpool characters right now. But yeah, I think that's good that they swept the more comedic X-Force out, out of there because that sets up to a probably a, what probably for the X -For actual X-Force movie, they're going to want it to be a little more darker and more serious. So that's a good thing. Plus uh, Wade forming his own, plus Deadpool forming his own superhero team. I mean, was that ever really going to work out? Even in the comics, I don't think it even works out. But the real thing that made Deadpool 2 fun for me was the post credit scene. Because in the post credit scene, Wade has Yukio and Negasonic Teenage Warhead repair Cable's time device, which he then uses to go back to the opening scenes of the movie and save Vanessa's life. And then what follows next is Deadpool fixing a, another, a number of other things in the timeline, such as saving Peter from the, Peter, the making sure he's the only surviving X-Force member because, well, he, he really shouldn't have been there in the first place. Um, but yeah, he saved Peter, and then he goes back to the X-Men Origins Wolverine movie and kills Baraka Pool, and finally, he ends his time traveling quest by going and killing Ryan Reynolds right before he signs on for Green Lantern. So basically Deadpool going back, not only correcting those, but basically negating the entire plot of the movie we just watched was insane and outrageous. And only Deadpool can get away with this. That is my rule. If Usually when something like this happens in any other movie, I would just call bullshit on it. But because it's Deadpool, because he is so messed up and so outrageous and all the things that he has done, I. I'm okay with this because I honestly expect this kind of shit from a Deadpool movie. <laughs> movie, but man, that 
put that uh, mid credit scene, it takes the cake for me, and I think it's probably better than anything Marvel Studios has done with the whole post credit scene. I just got through all the good stuff, now I'm gonna talk about a few things we have a problem with. First off, the orphanage where we meet Russell, aka Fire Fist, is called the Essex House for Mutant Rehabilitation. So once again, in another Fox X-Men movie, we get another teaser for Mr. Sinister. When are we going to see Mr. Sinister? I mean, honestly, I don't know when the, what the hell they're doing with Mr. Sinister. I keep, they keep teasing us, they keep teasing us, and it's like, oh, hey, uh, we're not doing it. And apparently, uh, Mr. Sinister was supposed to be in an upcoming New Mutants movie, and it was going to be played by John Hamm, but then they decide, eh, we'll get rid of it. Why? Just, look, either do something with Mr. Sinister now, because I'm pretty sure once the deal goes with Disney and they own the X-Men again, they're just going to reboot it. Like, hardcore reboot it. <laughs> so, if Fox, whatever it plans you have for Mr. Sinister, I would say do it quickly with New Mutants, because otherwise, we're never going to get to see what you had. And this is a really bad thing, but this movie's humor is a really big element about how good it is. And just be warned, do not watch this movie so like every week or so because I think watching because when for me when it comes to Deadpool if I read too many Deadpool comics or watch the movie too many times I'm gonna get sick of the character because Deadpool is a character that's fun he's enjoyable but really only in small doses be warned how many times you go see this movie because if you see it like too much too frequently in a row then you may start to hate it and I don't think any of us want that Deadpool 2 proves that the Deadpool franchise is probably the best part of Fox's X-Men. Uh, Ryan Reynolds and company have a great love for Deadpool and it shows in each of these movies which I love. I think when movies are made by, comic book movies are made by fans, they really show the best of the characters and why they're so great. And um, you know, despite what I just said about watching it frequently, if you did enjoy the first one, I'd say go see Deadpool 2. Seriously. It is probably one of the best uh, superhero movies this year this year. Um, although if you asked me if I would want to see Infinity War or Deadpool 2 again, I'd probably go Infinity War just because of what I said about watching this too frequently. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thank you again for watching. Uh, remember to stay subscribed and notified whenever I post a new video. Uh, what'd you guys think of Deadpool 2? Comment down below. Remember, follow me on my social media. Links are in the description below. I'm Spider-Man991 saying see you later.